Dalmia Bharat, India's fourth largest cement maker, has delivered strong financial results in the September quarter. In our Ideas for Profit today, we'll discuss the key earnings fine print to find out what should be investors' strategy now on this stock. Well, Dalmia Bharat's quarterly revenues rose 8% on a year-on-year basis to 24.10 crore rupees. Also, that was on the back of 7% year-on-year growth that was seen in the cement volumes. Now, realizations also came in flat, but decline in the slag prices aided gross margins this time. EBITDA grows 49% to 710 crore rupees as the margins improved 810 basis points year-on-year on the back of several cost-saving initiatives. Now, Dalmia's strong volume growth was aided by the ramp-up of the Kalyanpur uh, cements and robots demand across the eastern markets which actually grew in a healthy double digit and that was despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Now in contrast the southern markets had a slow start due to lackluster demand and widespread rains but gathered momentum in this latter half of the quarter definitely. Now increase in EBITDA per ton to say 1,463 rupees uh, was actually driven by favorable raw material prices and also the cost realization measures. Now, the sharp uh, reduction in power and fuel costs and the employee expenses led to savings on the cost front. Now, during the quarter, Dalmia completed the acquisition of Murli Industries, which has 3 million tons capacity in Maharashtra. Now, the management is planning about a 350 to 400 crore rupees of capex to realign its cost structure that's in line with the parent company. Now, the integration and ramp up of assets is underway and the company expects to start commercial production over the next three to four quarters. Now, to further strengthen its domestic footprint, the company is undertaking 8 million tons capacity expansion in the eastern markets. Going forward, the company will also be expanding its geographic footprint in northern and the central markets and that's through organic and the inorganic means. Now, during Q2, the company has repaid 246 crore rupees of uh, debt through internal accruals. The balance sheet continues to strengthen and the net debt to EBITDA ratio also has reduced to 0.9x at the end of the September quarter. Now, the leverage is anticipated to remain around the current levels on account of the CAPEX-related investments and also some increase in the working capital requirements going forward from here. Now, the company has demonstrated solid operational performance in Q2 or in the quarter gone by. Now, the uptick was in actually volumes was quite impressive and that's amidst the uncertain macro environment uh, due to the pandemic also. Now, while cement demand has declined in the first six months of FI21, the management is now hopeful of a demand recovery and also expects the volumes to grow in the H2 of FI21 and that's due to the pent-up demand and also the resumption of stalled infrastructure projects as well that could not get operated in the the first six months due to the lockdown restrictions. However, the worsening situation on the pandemic front and the rising pet coke and oil prices do pose a threat to its revenue and the margin profile. Now, Dalmia continues to turn out results that uh, show stability and uh, has consistently outperformed the larger peers both on the volumes as well as on the margins front. Now, the current capacity utilization levels of say 70-75% provide sufficient, uh, sufficient headroom also to capture the market demand going forward from here. Now, coming to valuations, 8.4 times FY22 estimated EV2 EBITDA, these are at a discount to the sector leaders and the company appears um, a promising pick for a long-term horizon. However, keep in mind that the macro and environment continues to remain quite hazy and the long-term investors could actually wait for some pullbacks to initiate any kind of long positions if they want to for the long term.